Thanks for joining Health Affairs This Week. I'm Vabren Watt. And I'm Ryan Tanap. You know, Health Affairs October issue focuses on disability and health. As part of the issue, we are including artwork to accompany some of the content by residents from Art Enables, an art gallery of vocational arts program in Washington, D.C. If you haven't checked it out yet, today's co-host, Ryan Tanap, wrote a forefront article on, on Art Enables and had the pleasure of speaking with some of the residents, artists, and staff. Yes, that's right, babe. And I just wanted to direct listeners to our Health Affairs Sunday update newsletter that you're welcome to subscribe to, as well as social media, specifically LinkedIn, where we're featuring five artists from Art Enables. We purchased their artwork and we'll be featuring um, a brief profile on each of them as well as the artwork that we purchased. So please check that out. And to continue the conversation, we're joined today by Tony Brunswick, Executive Director at Art Enables. Tony, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. I appreciate the invitation. Oh, absolutely. So if we could get started, uh, what is Art Enables, Tony? Yeah, um, I'm very happy to, to talk about that. So Art Enables is a professional art gallery and studio dedicated to amplifying the careers of artists with disabilities. And we do this by providing artists with the platform to be able to create, exhibit, and earn income from their artwork. So Tony, what type of guidance does Art Enables provides to artists on how to set rates for artwork? Yeah, so we do a lot of work supporting artists in the art um, the, the creation phase of the artwork, the marketing phase, and the, the exhibition and sale phase. And um, the pricing of artwork is tricky for any working uh, emerging and professional artists. And so we sit down with the artist and talk about what the DC market typically um, uh, brings for artwork and discuss how artists want to be able to price and market their work. Um, there's a, a consistent pricing band that the studio typically operates within, but we want to make sure we're honoring the artist, the time they put into the work, and the work itself by pricing it at um, a respectable price. And just to follow up on that, um, do the artists uh, get to have some say in that price? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, some artists prefer to allow the studio to to manage that aspect of sales. And then we have other artists that we check in with and give us advice and feedback on what they think the work should be valued at. Um, and so it's a, it's a conversation across the studio with the artists on what the ultimate price ends up being for any individual work. Great, thank you. So we read a 2017 NPR article that you and I had talked about previously uh, before I wrote the article. And in that article, you stated that when an artist joins Art Enables through the Department of Disability Services in DC, about 70% of the cost is covered by a waiver program funded by Medicare and Medicaid. Is that still the case? Um, yes and no. No in that... Um uh, since the pandemic, it's affected our programming, which affects how we're working with Medicaid and how we're working with the DC Department of Disability Services. So our income through um, providing Medicaid waiver services has declined overall. Um, also, that 70% even prior to the pandemic, it is true that it covered 70% of our costs. Um, I would say that with you know the economy and the way that it is now, everything is costing more as an organization. It costs more to retain people. It costs more to run programs. That um, even if we were billing at the same levels or working with Medicaid waiver programs at the same levels today as we were prior to the pandemic, it would now be less than that 70%. If we tried to be 100% funded by what we receive through our Medicaid partnership, we would have to make some drastic changes as an organization to be able to um, work within um, the Medicaid funding. As it, as it stands now, we do a lot of outside fundraising and development activities to help offset the cost that we think should and need to go into supporting the artist's career development um, through our program model. So you mentioned that the pandemic significantly affected funding for our enables, and you know that's the case for organizations across the board. We'd be curious to hear how 
did Art Enable specifically close the funding gap? Did you have to outreach to existing groups of supporters or did you find, um, you know, new, new funders? So, you know, for so many people when the pandemic hit, it was just such a difficult blow. And I think for folks that um, work with Medicaid funded programs, it was especially difficult. We lost about 95% of our Medicaid funding once the pandemic hit. So it was a pretty drastic um, uh, uh, blow to us. But fortunately, we were able to offset 100% of those losses through other revenue streams, um, through individuals who just stepped up their giving. Art Enables is a nonprofit organization, so um, there were a lot of individuals who stepped up their financial support of the organization. We found new foundation and um, public funders, uh, state and government funders that we were able to apply for grants um, and receive that. And then we also did take advantage to the extent we could of, of available emergency COVID relief funds, whether at the federal level through the PPP um, programs or at the state level where there may have been state-based relief programs available. So a combination of, uh, of all of that and being extremely resourceful and trying to find um, additional funds, we were able to withstand um, the financial impact of COVID. So we were able to continue fully supporting every individual that was receiving services through our studio, um, through the entire duration of the pandemic, which we're really grateful and proud of. That's fantastic. Um, was there anything else that you think we should um, know that we actually didn't ask about today? I, I would just say for those uh, listeners uh, who who are new to Art Enables, I would invite you to check out um, our website. Um, we have incredibly talented artists working in the studio um, who have built uh, incredible uh, a following of collectors and art buyers, and the work really stands on its own against, uh, alongside their peers in the visual art space. Um, art Enables has been around for 21 years. Artists have sold all over a million and a half dollars of of artwork and merchandise in that time, and it's just a it's a really exciting program, um, and it's an incredible display of talent um, that uh, we just want people to know about. And to see and experience and if you like to buy <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing you know the artwork is once again it is featured on the disability and health issue check out ryan's article which she has uh, uh links to the uh, profiles and backgrounds of the artist as well as some more art and if you check out just the issue of the disability and health even on our main cover there is art featured from art enables you know, Tony, thank you so much for joining us for Health Affairs this week. And thanks to our listeners for another episode. If you if you like this episode, please tell a friend, leave a review or subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast. Once again, for Health Affairs, I'm Vabron Watts. And I'm Ryan Tanap. Goodbye. Bye.